The Marvel comic universe is filled with powerful mutants fighting either to preserve humanity or take control into their own hands. In this video, we will be talking about Warpath, a mutant from Marvel Comics who has maintained common grounds between good and evil. Warpath is considerably one of the most underrated heroes of all time when we talk about mutants and the X-Men. In this video, we will be talking about his origin and his connection to the X-Men. We will also discuss his powers and abilities and what makes him stand out from others with similar powers. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the origins and backstory of this incredible tank-like mutant, James Proudstar, the younger of the two sons of Neil and Maria Proudstar, was born in Camp Verde, Arizona. James, an Apache who grew up on the reservation, spent his formative years at the Proudstar Ranch with his parents, his grandpa, and his older brother John. Because of their mother's exposure to nuclear radiation from a government testing facility nearby, both of their brothers would later develop certain mutations that would give them special abilities. James looked up to his older brother even more so after he enlisted in the US Marines and left for a two-year tour of war. Sometime soon after John returned from his tours of war, a Dr. Edwin Martinek diagnosed their mother with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. This was apparently a fatal form of cancer. When Michael Whitecloud, a fellow writer, informed John that there was a problem with the medical tests, John agreed to assist in the investigation into Martinek and the Arroyo Medical Laboratory, which was performing the lab work. James hid in his brother's truck in search of adventure, glory, and the like, and the three broke into Arroyo to search for proof. What they found out was that Martinek had been altering lab results to obtain test volunteers for his own unlawful genetic enhancement study. The doctor was later revealed to be a creature with werewolf mutation, but John was able to hold his ground against Martinek long enough to lead the others away to safety, thanks to his developing mutant abilities. John and James were able to confirm that their mother was actually in excellent health while Dr. Martinek blew up the Arroyo labs to hide his departure. James Proudstar idolized his older brother John while growing up on the Apache Reserve. For a mission to save the original squad, John was given a position in the X-Men. Thunderbird became the name John adopted. Tragically, Thunderbird was slain on his second assignment while attempting to stop crime boss Count Nefaria from escaping. When the X-Men returned to Camp Verde to bury him, James seized his body and burned it on a funeral fire fit for an Apache warrior. In his grief, James accused Charles Xavier for being responsible for his brother's passing and promised to one day exact revenge on the X-Men founder. James's life was devastated. He was absolutely crushed and he held Charles Xavier accountable for the passing of his brother. While this is his backstory, a lot happens that develops his character into the warpath we know now. Some of his major comic book story arcs the Hellions. Emma Frost, the headmistress of her own mutant school and the White Queen of the Hellfire Club, saw her opportunity to take advantage of James's hatred for the X-Men and offered him a position in the Hellions. James took over the Thunderbird mantle and attire. His animosity for the X-Men had not lessened though, and he tried to make an attempt at getting back at them. Later, he disguised himself as his brother and abducted Banshee, the retired X-Man, to lure the team into a trap. Proudstar forced the X-Men to break the law in order to get inside the NORAD military base, where John had died before, to find Banshee by informing them that she was being held captive inside Cheyenne Mountain. Thunderbird also had some unpleasant assistance from his fellow Hellfire pupils, Roulet, Empath, and Firestar in his quest for vengeance against the X-Men. If it wasn't for the Hellions alerting Norad to the presence of the heroes and causing problems, the X-Men would have successfully penetrated Cheyenne Mountain. When they were engaged in a single battle with Wolverine, Thunderbird had the opportunity to leave the wounded Logan and the knocked-out Shadowcat to die from the nerve gas Norad was pouring into the room. But he couldn't bring himself to do it. Instead, he even put his own life at danger in order to rescue them both from the gas and give them an antidote. Even when innocent civilians were put in danger during the incident, he became furious with Empath and Roulet's intended assistance. 
James hurried to the Blackbird outside NORAD to murder Charles Xavier and avenge his brother, but ultimately realized he couldn't. James was torn between his own objectives. After reaching a truce with Xavier, the latter invited James to remain at his mansion, but James declined. He came to the conclusion that he had to forge his own way and emerge from his brother's shadow. Either way, going back to the Massachusetts Academy to finish his training with the White Queen was a need for achieving that objective. James persisted in proving that he was a nice and honorable guy despite his choice of allies. Thunderbird greeted the new mutants with wide arms and showed no signs of resentment for previous encounters when specific circumstances led to their temporary enrollment in the Massachusetts Academy. Empath later used his abilities to abuse two of their friends psychologically and the new mutants captured him to punish and discipline him. In order to rescue their least agreeable member, James insisted on looking after his own people and gathered the other slightly hesitant Hellions. When confronted, the the new mutants consented to hand Empath back over to Thunderbird, and Proud Star personally taught Empath a lesson for his misdeeds and vowed to keep him in check. After Magneto joined the inner circle and helped mediate a ceasefire between Xavier's followers and the Hellfire Club, the new mutants and Hellions became closer over time. The Cheyenne new mutant Mirage, also known as Danny Moonstar and Thunderbird, grew close, and there were suggestions that their initial mutual adoration might have turned into anything more in the future. However, due to them being on opposite teams most of the time due to their allegiances, they were only allowed a few brief moments of privacy. Exports James returned to his Apache reservation in Camp Verde when his desire for retribution had reduced. James returned from a trip to New York to discover his entire reserve had been decimated. There was evidence that the Hellfire Club was accountable. A Hellfire Club agent's mask was left behind. This was the turning point for James, because here we would see that he took Cable up on his offer and joined the X-Force under the moniker of Warpath. He believed he could use his group to exact revenge on the Hellfire Club. While being a part of the X-Force, their old headquarters was destroyed after a a gruesome battle with Weapon Prime. This is when we see Warpath offering his generosity to let the squad use the deserted Camp Verde reservation as a center of operations. X-Force agreed because they had no other choice and moved to Arizona. James found out that the team called the Upstarts had killed and neutralized the entire old guard of Hellfire Club's inner circle along with Fitzroy placing Emma Frost in a coma. They killed almost all of the remaining Hellions and Jimmy's old buddies before the X-Men temporarily imprisoned the entire X-Force team at the mansion over a misunderstanding believing Cable to have assassinated Professor Xavier. Warpath continued to serve with the X-Force after realizing that getting his retribution was pointless. He went with Cannonball and Firestar to Nova Roma to tell Magma and Empath what had become of the Hellions. Following that, X-Force made the decision to go on and discover a new goal. James persuaded Siren to create a copy of the X-Men's database before they left the mansion, nevertheless in order to assist the team in getting back on track. Warpath had no such disputes with the X-Men because, in his opinion, they had never offered him much. They had already cost him his brother and now they had imprisoned him. Furthermore, the duplicated data would undoubtedly aid X-Force in catching some bad men, he reasoned, and the ends would justify the methods. James was unaware that Xavier had telepathically observed the theft but done nothing about it. Warpath had another motive for sticking with X-Force. He started to fall in love with Teresa Rourke Cassidy, better known as Siren. Every now and then, he would praise her and seem to guard her. As a result, Proud Star noted that she started drinking more and more, but despite this, he still had to take care of her, putting her to bed after a binge and cleaning her up. Teresa's drinking was only acknowledged by Cable. On his advice, James eventually confronted Teresa about it and his emotions for her, even though doing so meant running the danger of ruining whatever opportunity he might have had with her. Siren first refused to hear anything about it, but eventually she confessed, and Warpath gave her a shoulder to cry on. 
Teresa decided that a trip to Cassidy Keep in her native Ireland was necessary in order to rediscover herself, and she invited James to join her. However, Siren's alcoholism worsened throughout the first two weeks. Siren didn't control her drinking until Warpath made contact with the Juggernaut to arrange for Teresa to see her uncle, Black Tom Cassidy, and the two of them appeared to find peace with one another. James was willing to accept the situation, but his heart was still quite broken because Teresa still desired to be just friends with him. Following their return, X-Force joined the Young Hunt, an upstarts competition in which the New Mutants and all former Hellions were the targets. Magma cut off a lengthy engagement with Empath after this disagreement because of the way he had misled her. Warpath felt obligated to offer his former partner a seat in X-Force and to help him get over the breakup even though he had never really liked him that much. However, Empath rebuffed the offer with arrogance. Later, it was found that Professor, the computer program controlling Cable's machinery, had developed full sentience and created a body for itself out of discarded machinery machine parts. However, it was decided that Prosh, as he was calling himself now, had to depart Earth because his presence was ruining Cable's techno-organic body parts. Prosh was able to create a spacecraft on his own, although doing so required a lot of mass absorption. Warpath had no issues with his using the Camp Verde ruins. In fact, he thought it was pretty symbolic for fresh life to emerge from the ruins of the reservation. The old burial ground of the tribe was the only place he requested did Prosh leave alone. The rest of Camp Verde was his to use. Naturally, X-Force was compelled to change headquarters as the result of this. Warpath went to confront Emma Frost about the Camp Verde atrocity a few weeks after she emerged from her coma and started instructing Generation X at the Massachusetts Academy. She told him what James already knew in his heart, that she was not to blame for the assault on his people. They talked at length about Jimmy's need to establish himself in society. Warpath's unrequited love for Siren was hardly a justification 22 remaining on the team, Emma noted, given he wasn't really devoted to Cable's vision of the future. She also noted that although he had originally left the Hellions because he did not want to become like his brother, he was still imitating his appearance, donning a different version of his outfit, and basically living in his shadow today. James argued that Emma should heed her own advice because she was, in fact, repeating her earlier errors errors, but he was unable to discount the validity of what she had said. Warpath started to make adjustments in his life, starting with a fresh bus cut and new clothes. At the time, Cable had similar goals for the entire group, moving X-Force into Xavier's mansion with the X-Men, ordering them to wear uniforms with matching color patterns, and encouraging them to push their own personal boundaries. In Warpath's case, Cable insisted that James start training with a bow staff as a personal combat weapon, which which he didn't particularly enjoy. Even though Siren had simply been sent away by Cable on an undercover mission, James was understandably distraught when she vanished. A few days later, when she came back, Warpath was first ecstatic to see her. However, he was disappointed when she gave him the cold shoulder and didn't even bother to say where she had been. Warpath discovered new ways to experiment with his abilities after meeting Mimic. Mimic screamed in anguish as he imitated James' skills and questioned how James could handle the extrasensory stimulation. Warpath had always relied on his power and had never been aware of his enhanced senses, a quality that his late brother had. Jimmy quickly started sprinting with superhuman speed and displaying extremely heightened senses. The Messiah Complex The mutant world was in upheaval after the first new mutant burst since M-Day. Warpath was one of the X-Men kept at the mansion as the various forces started maneuvering against one another for the future and the child's fate. Hepzibah and him were in his bedroom when the Sentinels turned on the X-Men and attacked the mansion. Warpath complained that he had known that it was just a matter of time before this occurred as he threw himself out the window at the closest Sentinel. He assisted in defending the students and defeating the Sentinels together with Cyclops, Hepzibah and others, killing two of them all on his own. Cyclops summoned the X-Force, made up of his most effective hunters and most lethal X-Men, in order to go pursue Cable and reclaim the child after the betrayal with the Sentinels.
In order to gather information, they first went back to Alaska and the child's birthplace. Warpath disobeyed orders when they arrived and entered and attacked the cop stationed at Sentry. However, after explaining his justification, Wolverine subsequently let him be. In order to prove a point and to determine whether he would be able to carry out the deed in the event that it actually came to it, Wolverine gave him a task to complete with Wolfsbane. Warpath spoke in rain about his thoughts on the assignment while they were searching. Cable was like a father to him, and despite his desire to save him, he taught him that the mission always comes first. When they heard gunfire, they hurried over, Warpath taking the lead, and discovered that Hepzibah and Caliban had killed the cops. Warpath disclosed that he had investigated the structure and discovered different escape route. They can escape the police and go back to the Blackbird by using it. Warpath and the others join the fight. They are able to catch up to Cable by following the trail because he is occupied battling the Reapers. Caliban puts himself in harm's way to shield Hepzibah while he tries to aid her, absorbing the deadly wounds himself. Warpath throws his dagger without thinking, killing the Reaper. He then visits his friend's body to express his grief. Once they realize Cable has been traveling in a straight route, Cyclops and the others decide to pursue him once more when they get there. While waiting for Cerebro to come back online, Warpath broods at the loss of his friend. When Monet tried to discuss it with him, he told her to leave it alone and vowed to take revenge on those who did this. As the X-Men enter Forge's workshop and discover the remains of the Bishop and Marauder's conflict, Warpath is there. Warpath Warpath tries to get Hepzibah left behind when Cyclops sends them back out on the mission because he doesn't want to be held accountable for any more of the people he cares about dying. She shows up at the end after she and Wolverine argue over the issue. In an effort to recover the child from the enemy forces, they keep track of Cable and the infant. In the end, Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men join them when they finally catch up with sinister soldiers at their new headquarters on Muir Island. X-Force must eliminate Predator X in the decisive confrontation. Warpath jumps onto its back and prepares to stab it when it realizes that it has a healing factor. He and the others continue to combat the beast after it appears to have eaten Wolverine. Logan ultimately disposes the creature by disemboweling it from the inside. Warpath watched as Bishop shot the professor and Cyclops delivered the infant to Cable to transport to safety in the future. Cyclops then resolves to dissolve the X-Men. He has an interesting role in X-Men Days of Future Past. We even see Warpath making an appearance on live-action cinema. Warpath is portrayed by actor Boo Boo Stewart in X-Men Days of Future Past. In this movie, the world is devastated by the Sentinels as they have taken over the planet and are herding humans like sheep, separating the mutants from the non-mutants. This incarnation of Warpath is a member of the future X-Men squad alongside Blink, Sunspot and Bishop. He is shown battling alongside the other mutants at the opening of the film, trying to make time for Kitty and Bishop to reset the current timeline, but he loses his life during the battle. Luckily, he stalls them for long enough and they are all saved, at least initially. The Sentinels realize that there has been a change in the timeline and continue looking for the X-Men once again. The incidents were forgotten once Bishop was sent back in time by Kitty Pride. Wolverine is immediately sent back in time when these mutants join the X-Men. In the movie, we only see him for a few short scenes lasting roughly for a few minutes. His only abilities that are actually portrayed are his keen senses and use of his Bowie knives. They eventually come under attack from Sentinel. In the end, while making his final stand against the Sentinels, one of them again burns Warpath alive. Luckily, the timeline gets reset far enough in the past so that the Sentinel project never took place. This actually changed the Cinematic Universe timeline as well as it rendered all previous movies non-canon. His current whereabouts in the new time frame need to be clarified. Then again, without this particular change, we wouldn't have the new timeline with new characters. So there's at least some good in that. How freakishly strong is Warpath? Warpath is an absolutely massive tank of a mutant at a staggering 7 feet 2 inches tall and weighing a bit over 350 pounds. He is much stronger than he looks however, even though he looks like he could fold a car into origami swans. He goes toe to toe with a juggernaut and kept up. He has incapacitated a sentinel just by clapping and he's pretty much resistant to bullets and shrapnel from close range. Even though his skin is really tough, it isn't impervious, but he does have a ridiculous healing factor that rivals even Wolverine. 
Wolverines. He also recuperated fast from fatigue, indicating his mutations had quite an effect on his circulatory system. And not just that, Warpath does not solely rely on his strength either. He is a very well-trained martial artist and an extremely dangerous fighter when equipped with his Bowie knives. Now let's dive a bit deeper into how his powers were developed and how they have changed a bit over time. Warpath is a mutant with a variety of extraordinary physical characteristics, some of which have changed significantly over time. Due to his training with Pete Wisdom and the revelation that he was using only the powers of his older brother, Warpath's powers were marginally increased after the High Evolutionary restored the powers of all the mutants in the globe. Warpath now has some superhuman strength, though it is unknown exactly how much he can live. Over the years, he has varied from class 5 to class 90 levels. Jimmy could lift 2 tons as a young man and as a member of the Hellions, almost equaling his brother or sunspot. As he grew older, he significantly increased in strength, muscle mass and height. Warpath, according to Cable, only kept getting stronger and stronger. Warpath had class 75 strength in his early X-Force days, with a class 90 potential. The high evolutionary's effect appears to have rebooted the genetic codes of mutant species, allowing some members of X-Force to access mutational features that were previously unknown to them. In Jimmy's instance, it turned out that he had reportedly been restricting himself to the powers of his deceased brother. Nevertheless, with Wisdom's instruction, his strength level seemed to have improved somewhat and he had acquired the ability to fly at will. At this point, Warpath may have attained the class 90 level indicated above, if not higher. Warpath's strength, however, has recently appeared to be much weaker than it was during his X-Force days. He struggled when fighting a single sewer alligator and he constantly lacked the Hulk range strength he once possessed. Warpath is able to move and run at speeds that even the best human athlete cannot match, despite his enormous size. Warpath is capable of running up to 100 km per hour at his top speed. Warpath is physically stronger than the average person and may push himself at his maximum level of up to 24 hours before the buildup of tiredness poisons in his blood causes him to become less effective. Compared to a regular human, Warpath's body is more rigid and resistant to harm. He can, for example, withstand the force of powerful hits. He is capable of withstanding impact pressures that would be fatal or severely harm a regular person, such as falling from a height, being blasted by energy blasts of a particular intensity, and being struck by an opponent with superhuman strength. Alright, so that was as much about Warpath as I could fit into this video. He's definitely one of the stronger mutants without a shred of doubt, and to cover all of his story arcs, one single video isn't really justified. The character of the mutant Warpath is an extraordinary one, which offers a lot of depth and by delving into the comics, one one can understand why. Warpath's outlook at life, along with his own goals and aspirations, are sure to add much more to the Marvel and Mutant universes. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did making it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you at the next one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!